What's crack YouTube? It's your boy Doe back again with another reaction. You got five off-season trades everyone should want to happen. I don't know. I don't. I hope you don't bring up the Damian Lillard to the 76ers trade because uh, I'm going to eat that trade a lot, bro. I'm going to pick that apart because that's never going to happen. But uh, before we get into it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, man. We're one sub away from 295 subscribers, bro. Season Let's get it. To an end. We're down to just two teams. I've been thinking more and more about trades we could see this offseason. So he about to say it. I know he is. Five trades. That has I know he is. We should all want to see. If you guys like the video and want to see me do this for NBA draft night trades, let's try to get 4,321 likes on today's video. Shit. And let's hop into it. I want to start this off with Ben Simmons. Oh my God. Here we go with the Ben Simmons, Damian Lillard trade, bruh. I can't do this, bruh. I was literally in, in a Philadelphia 76ers fans live stream yesterday where they were just spewing bullshit. When I say dog shit, it was ridiculous, bro. It was ridiculous. They they want to give Ben Simmons up for any and everything, bro. It's so sad. And it's laughable. But if you the Portland Trailblazers, you have all the leverage in the world. You, you do. I'm sorry to tell the 76ers fans. And if you really want Damian Lillard and you really think he can take your team somewhere, if I'm the six, if I'm the Portland Trailblazers and you give me Ben Simmons, you got to really give me Ben Simmons and leave me with fucking C.J. McConnell, who probably doesn't even want to be there if Dame's not there. You gonna leave me with Ben, Norman Powell, and fucking Nasir Little? Oh, you, 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 you're you're crazy. You're crazy. If I'm the if I'm the Trailblazers, give me Ben, give me Seth, and give me Maxi, and I'll give you Dame, and I'll give you. Uh, Jones Jr., get that nigga off my roster. He's a bum. Buy, take that $10 million contract for for Seth Curry and Tyrese Maxey if you really want Dane. They have all the leverage in the world. Why wouldn't they do that? If you if not, we'll leave him here and try to build off of the next, what, three years? Because he, he, he can't. He has to play. That's my thing. If you the, if you the Blazers, milk Milk him for anything you can I've been get. About Simmons a lot recently. Because the seventy six ers lost no, to the Hawks. No, no team is gonna try to trade for Damian Lillard if they're not really contending for a championship. The Orlando Magic's not trading for Dan. The motherfucking Charlotte Hornets is not trading for Dan. If you really want him, you gonna have to come with the bag. I'm sorry. It's crazy to think about just how different his value is right now compared to a couple months ago. From everything I've seen up until this season, it was really a 50-50 split from the community on who was more untouchable between Simmons and Embiid. Even I was torn, which is just laughable to look back at. Having a point no, guard that just lives in the dunker spot on offense, who is afraid to shoot the ball, but even worse, is afraid of the free throw line. I really think Ben Simmons' unwillingness to take shots especially at the end of games, stems from his fear to go to the line, which is going to be a major red flag for teams looking at possibly trading for it. We're seeing these no, reports that Doc Rivers and the Sixers are dedicated to working with Simmons this offseason on his shooting. But come on, we know what this really is. They're trying to save as much value as possible. Now, there was an interesting development when it... Can we stop with this value stuff? Because everybody knows there's no such thing as trade value for star players. Ben Simmons' trade value is not going down. Because if it's that, if that's the case, Ben Simmons is not getting traded. And you know, if you really want Ben Simmons, you got to come equal. If, if not equal, then you're not getting nothing. There's So that trade value stuff goes out the window, bro. Everybody so knows Simmons you're going to pay top dollar for Ben Simmons. From the Sorry. Pacers, that was Malcolm Brogdon in a first round pick which was definitely a solid offer he averaged 21 points six assists and five rebounds shooting 39 percent from three but he struggled to stay on the court consistently so we now know that the 76ers aren't going to give up simmons for nothing but i really think exactly it's inevitable that he finds a new team before the start of next season that offer There's wasn't even that bad though he's thrown out there but my favorite trade to this point and one i really think is great for both sides is a deal with the minnesota timberwolves the reports have been flying in that the Timberwolves, quote-unquote, 
badly one Simmons, which gives me confidence this isn't too far-fetched. Now let's start with what a trade could possibly look like. It's a given that if this deal happens, it's most likely going to include D'Angelo Russell. The 76ers are going to ask for more, and there's going to be two options. The Timberwolves could add more young assets or draft picks, but given the 76ers situation, that probably isn't of much interest. So I think we'd most likely see Malik Beasley added on. There's a yeah. few landing spots I love for Simmons this offseason, but the Timberwolves are definitely the top one. One of the biggest struggles for this Timberwolves team is defense. Ben Simmons is going to come in, immediately bring that to this team. He's legitimately one of the best and most versatile defenders in the league. Despite him being listed as a point guard on offense, once he gives the ball up, he becomes He's a, a power forward player. If that remains his play style, I can't think of a better player to be alongside than Carl Anthony Towns, who's going to spend a lot of the time on the perimeter. I also think this really raises the ceiling of this team, especially if Simmons can get closer to his potential. We know the player that Carl Anthony Towns is, but this team also had one of the best draft classes from a season ago, headlined by the number one pick, Anthony Edwards. He averaged 19 points a game, but really turned things up at the end of the season. And once Cat returned, the team looked pretty solid. For the 76ers, you're getting perimeter scoring threats. It's going to be hard to go deep in the playoffs, depending on Seth Curry to be your main perimeter threat. That's a fact. Russell definitely has his flaws, but he's going to help solve that problem. This year, he averaged 19 points, shooting 39% from three. Malik Beasley could also be huge. This season, he averaged 20 points, shooting 40% from three. He still has three years left on his deal, so the 76ers are going to have to add some kind of contract, most likely through a sign-in trade to really get this done. These two combined for 16 three-point attempts on practically 40%. Now, the issue with this trade for the 76ers is defense. You're giving up one of the top defenders in the league in Simmons for two guys that aren't bringing much defense to the table. Crazy was considered a solid 3 and D guy early on in his career, but as his offensive volume has increased, his defense has slipped quite a bit. There's no doubt about it. This trade would put a ton of defensive pressure on Embiid, but it wouldn't necessarily have to be their only move of the offseason. Now, I've seen some interesting three-team trade possibilities. Yeah. They're bringing Ben Simmons to Minnesota and players like Kyle Lowry and Malik Beasley to Philly. So as the rumors heat up, this should be a fun storyline to follow. As a bonus, if Simmons isn't going to go to the Timberwolves, I would really love to see a deal done with Chicago. I really just don't want to see Zach Levine on the Bulls anymore. His <laughs> oh, Zach Levine averaged 27 points this year. Vucevic has even, like, he got traded. Like, come on, bro. He hasn't even been there for, what, four weeks? Like, the season was compressed into, like, four weeks, bro, after the fucking. NBA All-Stars, bruh. And now it's time to blow it up. Right after they fucking trade for Vucevic, bruh. They got Lori Marketing. They need a point guard. I You gotta put Kobe White on the bench. He has to be six man. He plays like a six man. A scoring six man. That's what he is. He need a real good point guard. Denzel Valentine's not gonna do that for you. So, y'all need to... the uh, Bro, the Bulls are good. If they add a good, a decent little player, add him to uh, the lineup, they're good, bro. They're going to the playoffs. They are most likely going to the playoffs. Situation no cap. It really reminds me of Devin Booker. He's putting up 27, 5 and 5, shooting 51% from the field and 42% from three on high volume. I truly believe he's not getting the respect he deserves. And that would change overnight going to a contending situation, something he's never been a part of. <sighs> Next up is a Bradley Beal trade. He's been in a ton of rumors for well over a year now, but with him being on the last year of his contract, it's extremely hard for me to imagine him wasting another year in Washington. So I really don't think he's going to be in a wizard uniform. You, you trade him for cents on a dollar. Over the course of this past year, I've thought about a lot of landing spots for Beal. There's a couple teams that come up over and over again, such as the Warriors and Miami Heat. But recently, I've been stuck on a certain landing spot, and that's a team that just fell short in the Eastern Conference Finals the Atlanta Hawks. Bradley Beal this year averaged 31 points, five rebounds and four assists, shooting 49% from the field and 35% from three. The Wizards were able to squeak into the play-in tournament, but there's really no hopes for them improving with Russell Westbrook's Supermax contract on the books. 
He's owed That's $44 nice. million dollars this season and has a player option for $47 million after that. Being on the last year of his deal at 28 years old, I really think Beal's going to want out. Seeing this Atlanta Hawks team be much more ready to compete right now than almost anyone expected really makes me think they might be the perfect fit. The Hawks don't have a lot of cash to give out. They gave big deals to Bogdan and Gallinari last summer. Which was a good, that's good. This might be their best opportunity given the lesser value that comes with trading for someone on the final year of their contract. When you look at this team on paper, there's a ton of really solid guys that a trade almost makes sense just in narrowing down their rotation between young guys like DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, John Collins, who's going to be getting a new deal, and Onyeka Okungwo, plus having all their future first round picks, plus a lottery protected first coming from the Thunder next season, I think they're actually one of the best position teams to get something done. Next up, we've got a player that I never really saw leaving his team, despite their struggles to really break through and become a contender, and that's Damian Lillard. Lillard has remained loyal to the Blazers when practically everyone has told him not to, but recently, He's been hinting at possibly wanting to move on, and it makes sense. He's given everything to this team, but now at 30 years old, he's probably looking to put himself in a position to compete for a title. I really believe Damian Lillard can be the number one option on a championship team, which just makes these rumors even more exciting. This year, he averaged mm. 29 points and 8 assists, shooting 39% from three on over 10 attempts a game. It really makes sense to jump ship at this point. McCollum is locked up till 2024, but Norman Powell could decline his player option and leave this summer. Yosef Nurkic and Robert Covington only have one year left on their deals, and Carmelo Anthony and Enos Cantor are both free agents. It's hard to find a scenario where this team improves in the near future. Now, a deal for Dame is not going to be easy. He's one of the best players in the league and is on contract till 2025, which is why I I'm think it's absolutely you. ridiculous. You're seeing rumors about teams like the Lakers. The only scenario imaginable that I see Damon a Lakers uniform is the Blazers respecting Lillard's decision and they work with him to go where he wants. But at the end That's of the not day, happening. It's business and it's the not Lakers happening. aren't going to come close to the packages from teams across the league. There's two teams that are super interesting that I think have a good shot and decent odds to get something done, and that's the Warriors and 76ers. They're going to come up a lot and right Why do the Warriors need Damian Lillard? Let's be let, let's do that. The Warriors are not going to name they're not sorry they, i wouldn't see the point of trading for damian lillard when you got steph stephen curry then you got clay thompson who's talking his shit he's getting his shit off right now like he 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 bro you know how many headlines i've seen of clay thompson talking his shit clay thompson's talking his shit right now i don't see i don't see them trading for dame i see them trading for a big for not dame because they got a decent little team but I already. My favorite landing spot is the Pelicans. The Knicks have been given the best Vegas odds, but it's hard to find a team who's gonna give up, can though? put together a better package than the Pelicans. They can build a package around Brandon Ingram. The Blazers are going to get a player seven years younger than Lillard, who's on contract till 2025. He just averaged 24 points, five assists, and five rebounds, shooting 47% from the field and 38% from three. They've got some other solid young guys like Jackson Hayes, Kira Lewis and Akeel Alexander Walker, plus a ton of picks. This season, they've got the 10th overall pick in the draft, plus four second rounders. They hold all their future first, plus several others coming from the Anthony Davis, Andrew Holiday trades. This team is probably in the best position outside of the Thunder, who will have no interest in a Lillard trade to put together the best package possible. You're pairing Lillard with a superstar in the making in Zion Williamson, who in just his second season, averaged 27 points and seven rebounds a game. Sure, a team like the Warriors sounds crazy to think about, but as a fan, I think this is the best possible spot. My last trade uh, that I've been thinking about a lot has to do with Colin Sexton. The Cavaliers hold the third overall pick, and it looks like that's going to be Jalen Green. Green. Green is good, and trust me, you're going to want to see him play. I really don't want to see him fighting for a starting position with Garland and Sexton still in the back. Yeah, he needs to train one of those guys. So trading the six foot shooting guard who can't play defense makes the most sense. Now, when thinking about landing spots, you've got to be careful. He needs to go to a team that has multiple playmakers. He needs to go to a solid defensive team. He is coming in to score, score on the ball. And to his credit, he does that well. This year, he averaged 24 points on great efficiency in just his third season. I'm really liking New York as the best landing spot. New York yeah. is looking to get active this summer, and if they straight we out talked about the this games, already. I don't hate them going after Sexton. 
I don't think it's going to be too high of a price tag. They were one of the top defensive teams. They've got solid playmakers at multiple positions, such as Randall and Barrett. So I actually think Sexton could help this team. That's going to need on-ball scoring, especially with Derrick Rose and Alec Burks potentially leaving in free agency. So that's the end video, guys. I want to know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And peace. That was a good video, bro. That was a fucking wonderful video, man. But y'all know I had to throw my little two cents in there because, you know, I'm a, you know what I'm saying, a future GM NBA scout. So, you know, so I got to get my shit off, too. But uh, you too, man. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, man. I'm out of here. How many other videos I should watch next, man? You know, catch you on the flip.